we will now begin our first session our first speaker of our first session is professor justin david i will request professor to deliver his talk he will be talking on precision test of bulk entanglement entropy okay uh, okay thanks uh, uh, well, uh. okay yeah yeah thanks gaurav for you know making me the first speaker <laughs> but uh, okay so i uh, I'm, i'll talk about this work this work is uh, you know in two parts actually it was done in two parts uh, earlier part uh, with only barsha uh, and the later part with barsha and along with uh, samanti jyotima and mukherjee none of whom are here actually now uh anyway uh, so let me start with the introduction to the question so maybe people uh, at least the junior people haven't seen uh, heard of this formula but there is this formula i'll give a sort of a schematic uh, introduction to that formula uh, which provides an expression for a quantity which is a quantum quantity called entanglement entropy across a particular sub region in a quantum field theory and it's an intrinsically quantum i mean the entanglement entropy is intri intrinsically a quantum object but this ryu takanaki formula uh, is a classical quantity in terms of uh, an area which is very geometric so here's the formula uh, and uh, let me focus in the context of something called the ads cft which which basically relates gravity to a uh, field theory a special field theory called conformal field theory and this formula can in principle be tested okay because we have this ads cft duality and in principle we can uh, con uh, you know calculate this formula from both uh, the cft the field theory as well as gravity and uh, let me sort of give a picture of this formula so you have a sub region okay let let's have a picture so we have a sub region so we are talking about say a cft on on the cylinder uh, so the spatial extent is compact maybe just just think of a wire uh, uh, and uh, here is a sub region from uh, angle phi equals 0 to angle phi equals 2 pi and and there is a quantity called entanglement entropy across this region uh, a uh, across the, for this particular sub region a now uh, you can calculate this using a kind of field theory aspects just using field theory methods but you can also calculate it using this conjectured formula which has a lot of evidences uh, uh, using you know area of the minimal surface so you have to calculate a geodesic Uh, in this geometry which is interior to the cft uh, this geometry is uh, is ads and you have to calculate this minimal length uh, and uh, it is supposed to give uh, uh, the uh, entanglement entropy across this region okay so you can calculate it on both sides that's the important thing about this formula and uh, and you know sort of test it now uh, of course this formula Uh, has uh, it's almost like the hawking beckenstein formula you can just see this uh, and it is sort of the leading uh, uh, expression in this uh, you know in this whole series uh, sort of series supposedly a series and it uh, there has been a correction to this formula which has been given by these authors uh, faulkner lokovic and maldesena uh, and uh, so this is the one by g newton is sort of the classical the correction uh, uh, classical part and this is the semi classical correction and this formula Uh, is a recent modification compared to that and uh, uh, they, there has been several applications of this formula uh, in the literature uh, uh, but uh, uh, you know uh, this has been this uh, has been uh, and it has been played a very and um, recently it has played very important role in quantum gravity information paradox and so on now and there are generalizations i mean the, uh, the formula is extrapolated in many contexts and not just in the ads cft context uh, so uh, so this but in the adsc uh, cft context uh, in principle you can test it because you have this expression from the bulk as well as in the cft and in principle you can test it and and what we are going to do uh, at least present uh, in whatever time i have uh, is a, a sort of a test a certain class of test quite non trivial tests of this formula now uh, so by by sort of going ahead and trying to do this what can we learn uh, so what we will do is we'll test it on various excitations in the cft and therefore corresponding excitations in the bulk uh, uh, you know and use this formula on both sides now by for just by asking that question uh, we will be you know we need to develop techniques to study excitation cft in uh, cft in the cft how to evaluate the entanglement entropy okay there are certain tricks called replica trick for that uh, we will develop we will need to develop techniques to evaluate this s bulk you know what is this s bulk this correction 
correction uh, what is this correction so this correction is quite uh, involved the leading part is just just this entanglement just this area this uh, you know minimal length of the minimal, minimal geodesic just like the area of the horizon the sub leading correction is quite a complicated object you have to trace over this part of the region right uh, you have to trace over this part of the region you have to uh, you know trace over the states in this part of the region and that is the sub leading so it's called the s bulk and that's quite a non trivial quantity to compute and we would uh, need to develop uh, techniques to ca calculate that so uh, and in cft you would not see this natural split uh, into the area as well as this s bulk uh, this is a concept uh, seen only in the gravity and we can see uh, by just evaluating the cft how these things combine together and produce this uh, uh, answer uh, and in fact consider and this entanglement entropy is a non-linear concept actually and uh, if you consider linear combinations of excitations we would be able to uh, verify how precisely this non-linear uh, you know behavior uh, is reproduced in the bulk okay uh, and uh, in fact uh, considering linear combinations we can actually break the symmetries of the ads and test the formula in less symmetric situations so all these are sort of the motivations and there is one instance in which some symmetric case has been tested uh, earlier and we will basically adapt this method and extend it quite non trivially okay and uh, uh, and you know there are certain operators we will look at so these are very specific things about the operators and there is a method at which we, we will actually evaluate it it will be evaluated in this sort of short distance approximation so in this length of the arc will be small this x will be small and it is in that uh, expansion we are going to test it okay so that's all sort of the generic uh, sort of setup for this uh, uh, and in all cases that we test we test several things uh, uh, the two i mean you know uh, there is agreement between both the cft and the bulk of course uh, in that sense it's not very interesting because uh, but the way it agrees is quite non trivial actually so uh, uh, so in the bulk uh, the agreement requires to calculate it. so uh, you can see how non trivial it is so when we uh, excite these uh, excitations in the bulk we will need to correct the area area uh, so we would need to find the back reactor geometry because the ads is deformed uh, we would need to compute the back reactor geometry uh, find the corrected area and then we would need to evaluate this s bulk which was quite non trivial and that involves a very non trivial transformations which which actually was uh, originally used by this uh, which involves certain coefficients called bogolyubov coefficient because it involves a non trivial transformation in gravity and we need to use that to calculate this s bulk uh, so this entanglement entropy so first in the cft so as as i said there are two aspects to this calculation the cft aspect and the gravity aspect so in the cft it was actually originally uh, sort of uh, studied it in scattered way here but in this paper a little earlier uh, we developed a systematic technique which can be applied to the situation uh, which we want and uh, let me just briefly sort of say this uh, technique so we consider a state in in this two dimensional cft uh, so we are uh, restricting ourselves to two dimensions in this case and uh, and uh, this operator is inserted in the vacuum uh, and then we consider the reduced density matrix that means we trace over this you know outside the angular region we trace over the stay, uh, you know the system outside the, ang uh, the angular region and then uh, we calculate uh, the entanglement entropy of this density matrix so roughly speaking the picture is this uh, because it's on a cylinder this is the time evolution the state is generated by the operator here uh, this is the bra this is the ket and here uh, is the sort of part which we don't trace over and this calculation uh, using certain conformal uh, techniques uh, conformal mapping techniques can be evaluated uh, mapped uh, to a two endpoint function uh, on on a disk actually on a on a plane uh, uh, and this is that expression uh, this is the replica trick basically instead of evaluating just uh, row log row we evaluate this quantity and this quantity can be mapped to something called a two endpoint function i know it is sort of not uh, it is hard to convey this across but essentially that quantity in the cft can be evaluated if you know uh, the two endpoint functions on this plane right so but in general this, uh, you know this formulation is general if there are descendants or composites it's, these two endpoint functions are quite hard to evaluate and in general the two endpoint functions are hard to evaluate because only in very special cases like the free boson or the free fermion these correlators are known 
Now, however, uh, as I said, in the systematic short distance expansion, we can we can sort of there is an expansion, short distance expansion we can set up uh, for this two endpoint function, and that's what we do. And once that is done, we calculate this quantity, and we will know the entanglement entropy. Now let me uh, sort of flash the result. So we consider this particular primary in a CFT, its particular state, and uh, linear combinations of the Virasero global Virasero uh, acting on it, uh, and so that's the state we look at. And here is the result. Uh, you see, x is the distance, right? X is that angular distance, and here is the sort of quite involved. This is the difference between the excited state and the vacuum. Vacuum has this conventional Cardi-like behavior, c by three log, and this is the extra. This is the extra, uh, and you can see it is very, uh, very non-trivial structure. And the linear combination C appears non-linearly, right? And this is a short distance expansion. There is this gamma function, so on. There are these uh, sort of uh, structures, you know, form factors, or what we call we'll, we call them dressing factors, uh, and which come in, uh, and they are precisely known. For instance, these coefficients can be computed by taking derivatives of this function. So this is one of our results. Uh, so we compute this, uh, you know, uh, systematically. And uh, and in, just to focus for the talk, let's take two linear combinations, the primary and its first descendant. Uh, and here is just the application of that to this, just for the compactness reason. So our goal is actually to reproduce this formula using the geometric uh, expression which uh, FLM had given. Uh, so for that, we need to understand how these excitations are created in the bulk. Right. Uh, so here is uh, uh, the ADS3. So because this is the bulk geometry, this is the ADS3, right? And uh, uh, excitation, this particular excitation can be mapped to a scalar uh, and its uh, low-lying excitations. As, and it's all excitations, actually. The, the descendants are related to the excitations of the scalar. So the scalar in the background uh, has this uh, equation. So this is the equation. And uh, you can more expand. This is something which many students can identify with. So you can more expand the scalar uh, in the ADS geometry because you know all its wave functions. I mean, in, in the simple case of the plane, which people are very familiar uh, with, with, it's uh, e to the power of i, uh, omega dot t, e to the power of i, k dot x, which is known. So this is the analog in ADS. Uh, where all these uh, numbers are known. So you can more expand the scalar uh, and quantize the scalar uh, in the way in conventional quantum field theory, you quantize the scalar. And uh, these wave functions uh, uh, can be mapped. Uh, and these are wave functions which we can compute for each of these. And can, they can sort of, we can map the state which we want in the CFT, this is the state we are interested, to the state in the bulk. So the psi naught naught and psi one one are are, are basically uh, the creation of operator acting in the bulk. So you can map precisely the states which you want in the CFT uh, to that uh, in the bulk. So these are the states. Then once you excite the vacuum in the bulk, you have to com compute the back reactor geometry. Uh, and here it is. Uh, you have to resolve the Einstein's equations. The ADS, uh, of course, solves the vacuum Einstein's equations. Uh, so uh, when when you excite the states, there is a stress tensor uh, put in, and you have to resolve the Einstein's equations. Okay. Uh, and this is the stress tensor for the scalar. Uh, and when you resolve, uh, so here is the uh, sort of formula for the expectation value of the stress tensor for that particular excitations. You can see those coefficients coming in: c naught, c one squared, and so on. Uh, and it's a very complicated stress tensor, I mean complicated in some sense, because it's a time dependent and angular dependent uh, stress tensor. Uh, so you can imagine that it breaks the isometry, right? And uh, we, there are several cross checks uh, for the, uh, these things which we have done. And uh, here's the structure of the stress tensor. Uh, and then we resolve the Einstein's equations. And uh, here is the, uh, you know, corrected metric. You can see these are the corrections. If I put J1, J2, J3 to zero, it goes back uh, to uh, to ADS uh, and and uh, you know this is the corrections in these J1 J2 J3 J4 are precisely known uh, there is some formula they're quite long uh, you can again see the C1 C0 all those things feeding in uh, and then we compute the corrected area right and that is basically area by 4 G Newton but with a corrected metric inside inside this so that's the corrected area uh, and uh, okay there is some for expressions which we have to use for corrected area so this is now the new metric and uh, the new uh, sort of minimal surface which doesn't change actually to this order but the metric changes so there is a correction and uh, if you correct find the corrected area uh, so this is that expression which we get 
and you see that this expression agrees precisely with the CFT answer, but this doesn't quite agree with this. Uh, it has different dependence. CFT answer had an 8H uh, and even the structure was slightly different, uh, was different actually. And uh, it doesn't quite agree. But uh, we also have the S bulk. And uh, yeah, so that's what I meant. Uh, we have the, also the S bulk and we have to compute that. Now, how do we compute it? So, uh, the, as, as we saw at that picture, we have to trace over the remaining part of this uh, geometry. And that, uh, to do that is pretty hard, actually. Uh, and uh, then, you know, once you trace over that geometry, you have to compute trace uh, row log row. And it's pretty hard to do. But there is a map uh, which relates that geometry uh, to the something called the Rindler BTZ. It was discovered by these people uh, and you use that map and the advantage of that map is that uh, the Ryu Taganagi surface gets mapped to the horizon gets mapped to the horizon and doing so it becomes easy because then since the horizon is a thermal state I mean this particular geometry is a thermal state you can use uh, uh, certain aspects of that to compute the partial trace so tracing over the rest of the geometry in the uh, you know in the ADS is like tracing over the other side of the horizon yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, roughly speaking, uh, that's how it works. So, the usefulness of that coordinate system is that the Ryu Takanagi geodesic, that arc which we saw, uh, gets mapped to, to the horizon uh, in that geometry. And then you can do the same expansion in that Rindler BTZ, exactly the same expansion. And you can, uh, you know, these operators which are there uh, in the uh, in the ADS can be related to the operators in this uh, geometry and that's how the Bogolev of coefficients come in. Now once you relate it, you can actually construct the density matrix, I'll go very quickly, uh, in that geometry and perform the required trace. And uh, when you do that, and that, that also admits a short distance expansion, uh, and when we do that, yeah, so these are the Bogolev of coefficients, uh, and when you do that, uh, you see, uh, so these are all the calculations in the bulk, uh, so essentially we have to use that geometry yeah so when you do that there are you know you have to organize the uh, organize this expansion systematically and here is one of the terms and this term uh, comes this is the first term this comes with a plus sign while that in the CFT came with a minus sign the precisely uh, precise, precisely that uh, CFT sign with a with the minus so it cancels the unwanted term and then there is an extra correction for the second order which precisely matches with the CFT. So, uh, combining these two aspects uh, uh, in, the, in the bulk, uh, right, this whole thing has been computed, it agrees precisely with the CFT, right. And uh, we have actually checked uh, it for several states. In the CFT, we have a very general formula. Uh, in the bulk, because the calculation is pretty hard, we could just do it uh, to these many states, actually. And in, these in each of these cases, these extra spurious terms cancels and uh, they precisely agree, uh, agree with the you know, CFT answer. Now, uh, let me just conclude. Uh, so, of course, as uh, you know, okay, though I have been very quick, but you can see the intricacies of this calculation. The details involving this verification of this formula is interesting, and several features of the holography is actually tested by doing this. Uh, so, first involves uh, developing uh, techniques in the CFT to eval evaluate the entanglement entropy, and there was a particular uh, field we used actually to evaluate this, uh, you know, these correlators, uh, two endpoint functions. It's called a generalized free field. And that is believed to be the one which is dual to the CFT. That it tested that. There is certain evaluation of Bogolivov coefficient which was involved, uh, and the nonlinearity, precise nonlinearity, agreed on both sides. Uh, and of course, the sy system was very asymmetric in this case. Uh, and let me just leave you the sort of thing which we are studying with the Rairith and so on. Uh, so we have in an earlier paper with Barsha, we had actually calculated the entanglement entropy of the stress tensor and its descendants in the CFT. So this is the expression. And these are all, because its stress tensor varies, is universal, these are all universal numbers. Right? And this is something which we would like to reproduce, uh, uh, you know, in the, in the bulk. Okay. So I'll just leave. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. So this session is now open for questions. Yeah, this is matter because that scalar field is there. What is scalar? So we are actually with Rairith, we are uh, moving to vectors and gravitons and so on. Yeah. So if there is a free scalar field in the ball, yeah. then in the boundary it is a free CFT. 
CFTs it can be defined so so the boundary yeah that's what i call generalized free uh, cfts uh, so the cft the correlator c we had to evaluate the two end point function correlator mm. and in general that's not known mm. but for a generalized free field uh, so the correlator is actually split into n two point functions okay. i mean by weak contractions or, or arbitrary weak contractions but when you weak contract the two scalars you have to do one by x minus x1 to the power two delta where two delta is the uh, you know it's not free uh, it is not like scalar field or not but it's called generalized free field okay. so we use the generalized free field which is believed to uh, sort of capture the large c cfts and that's how uh, things work out yeah those details i can't like i didn't go into but yeah this yeah so in uh, many uh, condensed matter applications uh, people study discontinuities right. in the entanglement entropy and yeah. these are uh, identified with uh, quantum phase transitions right so uh, do you uh, do you see any um, any uh, situations where you would uh, uh, you this. would see a discontinuity yeah, in the yeah, entanglement is, entropy. Yeah, uh, not in this one, but there is one uh, uh, you know situation which we had earlier studied. So if you take a pulse, suppose a pulse of energy or something uh, created by some excitation, and you look at an entanglement entropy across the region, I mean, uh, and this pulse enters it. Once it enters it, it, it I mean, it depends on uh, on how it, uh, you know, how the pulse is. If it's very sharply peaked, the pulse, then the, there's a jump. It's a, it's a sharp jump, uh, and in fact, in one limit, it's just a step function. Mm. Uh, uh, so that's the discontinuity, and, and the step function, that gap of the step function, is related to the, you know, properties of that operator. So that's one example we have seen actually mm. earlier. Not in this one. This one is just a short distance, and mm. it's nice. It's a nice expansion in short distance, though the first, there is a series of terms uh, which is analytic and these terms like, you know, okay, this, this, not this one, uh, yeah, pi, uh, 4H, for instance, these are not analytic terms, actually. Uh, so, there is this analytic term and there is a non-analytic term uh, and okay. sort of. Together, okay. But the situation yeah. you described is uh, yeah. a little bit, maybe substantially it's, different yeah, from a yeah, phase yeah. transition. Which yeah, that's a time-dependent phenomena. Yeah. I mean, it's sort of jump in the time yeah. dependence. And presumably, there's a time over which it settles down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It jumps and then it uh, yeah it settles down. Any more questions? If not, then let us thank Professor Justin David for this nice hey, talk. Thank you.